Good tidings, all you lovely individuals. We are back. It is Leek Unlock, Eric and Mark here with you, beauties, and a 24 hour span, basically a 12 hour span. We are blessed with two incredible back to back game five playoff series in the EMEA, aka LEC, and the LPL in the middle of the week. It's not even a weekend, and we're getting game five bangers. That's the crazy thing. We're we're used to coming on to the show and being like, what a great weekend, guys. We told you we had these matchups. These are the bangers. On a Tuesday, we're getting a double dose of silver scrapes. That's pretty darn good. We're starting in Europe, in that LEC side of things. Winner's side of that bracket, G2XL for a spot in finals. And I don't know, let me tell you. I don't know what happened to Excel. They make basically one roster change with Peach coming in, and they go from the easy worst team in the league to going toe-to-toe with G2 because this series, after game one, I was ready for the 3-0 because it's dominance from G2, but we get to this game five, and it is one of the best game fives I remember the last couple of years in Europe. Ooh, XL rising up to the challenge has been the story. This LEC summer split, incredible that you miss out on the playoffs in winter and spring. And we're not just talking about playoffs, we're talking about getting even to the group stage playoffs for XL. Now we get this type of run in summer. As you mentioned, that one change is Xerxes swapping out for Pe Peach. And then the other change, of course, is Abadage for Viteo. But you look at this roster, you see them play. And not to take any away from Abadaga, because I'm going to get to that point. But you watch him and you go, wow, wouldn't this be better with a superstar in the LEC, an MVP level player like Mateo? But you look at what they've done with Abadaga and what the problems were for this team with Mateo. And you see him popping off and playing well with Heretics. You have to think that there's something going on in the communication and behind the scenes, whatever, with Abadaga and Peach on this team that is finally unlocking that potential, that power that we all thought was going to be there for this XL team. You combine that with Patrick playing like this hyped up guy from a couple of years ago. Limit is playing the best that we've seen out of his career. Odawamne was never really an issue, but the rest of his team has now stepped up to his level. All that said, it's still just not quite enough against G2 because now you can put the Kogma alongside the Kalista and the Draven. You gotta ban it against Han Sama. He plays it two games this series. 23, two and nine score line in that game five. He goes nine and one and we get to see this first Kogma and Milio duo. And let me tell you, it's pretty disgusting. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Cog Lulu, that is the picture perfect S plus plus pairing for the Cogma. I think Milio is going to be rising up on that one very quickly with what type of benefits, the type of advantages that he provides. The biggest one for me that I think a lot of people overlook with Milio, the peel. He provides quite a lot of peel. You know, the pushback with his things, the speed up, everything else. He's getting those advantages for you to get out of that situation, stay alive, but also for an ADC like Cogma. That mobility, that extra safety of playing a bit more aggressive, a bit on that line. And we know when you can play aggressive as an ADC, that Kalista, that Draven, that is the Han Sama special. And seeing this Kogma fall into that pattern, especially the way that G2 likes to utilize it, where they're drafting it, when they're picking it, this is a new secret for G2 Esports. And it feels like they're constantly trying to find these kind of crazy, specifically bot lane picks to build a comp around. You know, we saw last playoff run, you had the J4, Samira, Draven, we've talked about, Kliss, we've talked about. These off-meta picks to get their bot lane ahead has been the secret sauce for them. It was a wide spectrum of a series for caps. I feel like you got caps, craps, and claps all in one series. The full buffet from the G2 Esports mid laner. Yes, we got to see all of that from Caps and, and, and in this series. But I think the biggest thing as well, you got to see in this series, even with that fluctuation of what level of performance we were getting from him individually, is that locked in veteran. When you're talking about going to Silver Scrapes five games, and especially the way that this series ebbed and flowed between the way the two teams were playing and performing, 
that type of stability, that type of presence is a big factor. And when I look at the rest of this G2 lineup, when I look at how, you know, when they're going off stage and when they're when he's talking with Yike, those are big p- bonuses that I'm looking at for this G2 team. And also, much like previous playoff runs, feel like BB is turning it on. I've never seen him look so lethal on the crock than he did in this series. And this is one of those ones where I think it's tough because a lot of people maybe aren't going to be viewing Odawamne with that same type of power that is attached to his career just for this year with how things have gone with Excel. The form that he has shown this summer split, the way that he has been depended on for this Excel team, that is of the Odawamne legacy that he has built in the LEC. And for BB to stand tall, stand toe-to-toe to it almost every single time in this matchup, good sign for this G2 lineup. This is overall one of those ones where you are pushed, you are tested, you are bending. You're not breaking in this series and you're holding out strong and coming out on top. That is the G2 Esports victory. Despite, of course, it's a heartbreaking loss to lose in this fashion in Game 5. So back and forth, so many positive avenues to take for XL. Heretics or Fnatic, if you're XL, you should be sitting pretty and feeling good that you can handle either of those squads if you play at this level again. If you're playing at this type of level, you are guaranteed a competitive series. If you are if you are looking at this from Excel's perspective, looking at both Fnatic team, Heretics, certainly squads that you cannot be taking lightly that will have ways to challenge and push you. But you have that outside angle looking in as that advantage right now from what we've seen from how you were able to play against G2. I think the next thing is trying to find one of these creative angle picks. When we talk about G2, you're talking about Yike, you're talking about Hansama. Heck, you can even talk about BB, you can talk about Caps, you can talk about Mickey, you can talk about the whole roster. Having something special that they can cook up and pick up that has that edge in a best of situation. I'm looking at that Excel side and that would be something that you'd want to develop. Zach Mid coming to the finals for caps get ready for that one as uh we see it coming out but we have that followed up with an lpl yet another five game set we already had uh edg doing that in the previous matchup and now you get weibo gaming versus lng playing their first playoff series of summer and it was another we're going right to game five it was incredibly back and forth pretend you didn't see some of these Cassante performances from the shy he almost has a vintage the shy poppy 1v3 scenario to make you forget about the other four games oh. he had it it was right there until it wasn't there for the shy in this one heck of a series that we're gonna get to go through with this one but unfortunately it is way bow gaming suffering the same fate as edg making this climb making that journey through the lpl playoffs the gauntlet that's running through and you fall just short of securing yourself that losers bracket opportunity waybo gaming it ain't over for them just yet for the year we'll talk about that but if they do fall in this series to lng and of course the mighty emperor of the sands mr scout in the mid lane and let's be honest games one to three xiaohu was an absolute menace having his way with Scout in that matchup, but games four and five, huge bounce back out of Scout, especially in that fifth game. Gala played well in those two games as well, but this game five was so incredibly back and forth with some huge team fights just resulting in one or two picks either way. Even going back earlier, you saw the difference in play styles where Weibo opts for, I think they get two turrets mid lane and LNG ends up getting soul point obviously ends up biting them in the butt because they do get that ocean soul eventually but how many pushes did it take for lng to finally close out this game it was three or four plus an elder dragon before they could finally take down the nexus if you could hold on for probably one maybe two more waves i think there's a chance that they're able to turn around and get that miraculous victory in game five it doesn't come through. It is just overwhelming pressure at that point that yes, LNG find a way to crack the base, crack the code and crack that Nexus to take the series. And that means for the first time and it feels like forever, the top four seeds in the LPL are actually the top four seeds. We're going one to four BLG, JDG, TES, and LNG. It feels like there's always at least one major upset, but it's the top four making it to this uh, loser's bracket. And whew, if, if these series are even close to what we've gotten so far, the LPL playoffs are on another level this split. 
every time you think that you can't be excited enough about the LPO playoffs and get delivered what we've gotten, which is already fantastic, talking about the runs EDG and Weibo Gaming respectively made in these playoffs only to get denied by these top four squads. Yes, normally it is one of those ones making this great journey and getting all the way through and disrupting this final four picture. Not the case this year. It is all the top dogs, all the elite squads of the LPL. Buckle up. I know it has been a heck of a journey and ride so far. It's only going to get spicier in the LPL. And as you alluded to, we already know EDG guaranteed a spot in those regional finals. Weibo guaranteed that number six seed. So the final spot in Gauntlet, which means they have to at minimum win two best of fives to secure that fourth seed they can't even get the third seed but their season is still alive so we will see Xiaohu and the boys on the rift at least once more All right one more time to decide if is it it is the shy or if it's the fraud i know i'm always on that side and i'm huffing on that hopium copium because i'm betting that we do get to see a couple more of the shy gaming moments this year well you uh, he's maybe the one guy where I'm saying I don't want to see you on Cassante. <laughs> I want to see you on a different. He's the only guy I think I can say that. Game three was you know uh, okay on that Cassante. Game four, you are really questioning some. I don't you know, show that Cassante to Showmaker. He won't believe it. I, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> uh, the other squads, by the way, we've kind of got who the teams are going to be locked in the gauntlets. Obviously, depends how things play out. BLG or JDG, one of them is going to get there on championship points as that second seed. And assuming the other team, BLG or JDG, wins, TES and LNG are going to be fleshing out. They're already guaranteed spots in the gauntlet. So it's it's kind of double lives for all of these four remaining squads. Because even if they are eliminated in summer, they still got the gauntlet. What an incredible gauntlet it is that you're oh saying. My well, you're starting you're starting at the very bottom with Weibo, and I think a lot of people can kind of get their heads around that one. And then you start ramping it up with the thoughts of, well, okay, well, now we're gonna run through top esports and LNG, and that's before you get to face off against Uzi and EDG. Yeah, welcome to the LPL, bud. That could be a playoff bracket in its own right, and then you go, Oh, right. There's actually the two best teams in the world still to see. Oh, my goodness. And yeah, two best teams in the world. And that almost sounds like you're underselling how dominant, how exciting, how good these two squads have been in BLG and JDG. LPL playoffs, boys, you make sure you're watching these ones. It's where it's at. Yeah, we'll see if a couple extra days rest actually made any difference to JDG and BLG. Maybe they'll be rusty for one game. I, I give them, they both drop one game, probably the first game, and then they say, oh yeah, right, we're like the best teams in the world, so they'll figure it out. TES and LNG obviously got their hands full. LCS playoffs are also starting off. Maybe we'll get some five-game bangers out down there, maybe? Hey, always praying for that one from the LCS, getting us some good matchups. Not quite the expectation I think a lot of people should have heading for at least these beginning matchups for playoffs. I think it will get spicy as we get deeper into it. Once we get to see Dignitas and 100 Thieves on the Rift, that's when the spice really starts coming in. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's only a type of matchup that the LCS can deliver to you folks. You keep your Weibo, LNG, BLG matchups. We got Dignitas 100 Thieves matching up against TSM. That's just LCS things, but that is it today for League Unlocked. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. As always, thanks for watching, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.